Let's work through the practice problems from uh, Lesson 1.3a using the midpoint formula. Uh, remember from this lesson, our goal was to find the midpoint of a segment, find the middle of a segment. Um, first we started out by folding the paper in half and then we took the average of it. Um, and then we actually did it on the x and the y coordinate plane, so we did it with um, in two different directions. Uh, but what I would like you to do now is pause and jump to the bottom of the page and let's look at our uh, first set of practice problems. Uh, our first set of practice problems that we have here um, is dealing with uh, midpoints and bisecting. The first question here, it asks us to name the bisector of PQ. So if we look at our diagram over on the right, we notice that we have uh, P starting way over here on the left going all the way to Q on the right. The bisector is the one in the middle, and I know that it's in the middle because of these tick marks that we have right here on the left and the right. So if this point is in the middle, and I know that everything is the same, um, I'm just going to be simply naming the bisector, and that is this guy that cuts through the middle. So to name that, we would call that MN, it is a ray, and so we would put our little ray mark on it. Then the question asks us to find MQ. And so now we want to find out how big this is on this side. And remember, the left side, the right side is equal to the left side. So if we look at our picture, we can just simply say that MQ is 1 and 7 eighths. The last question asks us to find out what PQ is. Notice P starts on the left and goes all the way to the right, and it's made up of those two red circles right there. PQ is made up of 1 and 7 eighths plus another 1 and 7 eighths. If you have a calculator, you feel free to use your calculator. Uh, I don't have a calculator with me, so I'm just going to add them together. So I take the 1 plus the 1 and I make a 2. And then when I add fractions, as long as I have a common denominator, I can add those together and I get 14 over 8. 7 plus 7 gives me 14 and then the 8 stays the same. And then you look at that and you say, oh, that looks a little bit weird because I know that 8 can go into 14 um, one whole time. So I know this part of my fraction is equal to 1 and 6 eighths, and when I add that to the 2, I end up with 3 and 6 eighths. And then some people might even recognize that and say, oh, I could reduce that fraction by dividing by 2. So I get 1 and 3 fourths. Those of you that had your calculator, you might have just plugged that into your calculator and got 3.75. Both of those, any of those actually, are all acceptable answers. 1.75, 3 and 3 fourths, um, technically even 2 and 14 eighths would work as an okay answer, um, although we probably could find something better. What I want to do now is slide on to question uh, B here, and we're going to work on those. So hold on. All right, on question B, they ask us to use cubics. Um, I think that your teacher has probably talked to you a little bit about this in class. This is something that we're going to focus on for the whole school year, so I want you to get used to it. It's just something that is going to help you solve problems. Uh, there might be problems that you can solve without it, but it's something that can help you solve any kind of problem, and so it's useful and good to practice. As a refresher, what I want, you to, what I want to do is remind you, C remembers stands for circling the numbers, U stands for underlining the question, B stands for boxing the vocabulary, that always gives you an indication of what you're supposed to be doing, and then from there you're supposed to draw a picture or the image, and then finally you will explain and solve. So those are the problems that are going to help you get through these. So let's read this question. The question says, given C is the midpoint of BD, find the length of BC if you know the length of each part. Use cubics to draw a diagram and solve the problem. So when we start out with our cubics, the first thing that we want to do is circle any numbers that we see. 
in this case, there are no numbers. Then we want to underline the question or what they're asking us to do. They want us to draw a diagram and solve the problem. Um, that problem is find the length of BC. Then we need to box up all the vocabulary word that's important to us. In this case, we know that we have a midpoint. We know midpoints cut things in half. Um, and I think that's probably the only thing that we have. From there, we want to be able to draw a picture. In this case, the only picture that we really can draw is that C is the midpoint of BD. What does that look like? Pause for a second, and you draw what you think you see, and then we'll get back to you. All right. Did you get a picture that looks kind of like this? Midpoint, I know, has um, tick marks on there because they are equal. C is in the middle between B and D. Then we have to find um, some values here. In this case, we don't have any numbers. So now I need to give you some extra numbers. And so to this picture, I would like you to add these values. These are the numbers that we would be circling for this problem. I have these two parts right here. BC is 3x minus 2, and CD is 2x plus 3. Write those on your paper. And then to set up an equation, because I know I have a midpoint, I know these have to be equal to each other. So I have 3x minus 2 equal to 2x plus 3. From there, I want to solve. Again, I like to keep things positive, so I'm going to take this 2x and move it over to the left. So I'm going to minus 2x to both sides. 3 take away 2 is 1x. Minus 2 comes down. These guys make 0, so we just cross those out. And I didn't do anything with this plus 3, so I'm going to bring down the plus 3. Then I'm going to take that minus 2 and move it to the other side. This is minus 2, so to that we want to add 2. Again, I like to draw my line to get to the next part of the problem. Bring down the 1x. We don't touch that. These guys right here make 0. And then I add these guys together, and I just get a 5. Oftentimes, we have a number here with the x, and this is where we would divide. When you divide by 1, nothing happens. And so we have x equals 5. The thing about cubics is it asks us to go back and figure out if we have done the problem right. So go up here, and it actually says find the length of BC. x equals 5 is not that answer. So I need to take my 5 and plug it into the right part of the problem. And BC is on the left. So I'm going to take 3, and then I'm going to put in 5 right there in that x spot, minus 2. 3 times 5 is 15, take away 2. 15 take away 2 is 13. And there is my final answer. In this case, would it have been OK to plug it in on the right also? Sure, because what do I know about those two segments? Those two segments are equal. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus 3 is 13. That's a midpoint. The left side equals the right side. We got 13. So what I would like you to do now is pause and jump ahead to page two, and we have one more problem that we can work through. All right, the last problem that we're going to do here is we're going to be talking about midpoints. So in these practice problems, they ask us Right here, it says graph and label each set of points. Use the graph of the midpoint formula to find the missing point. So for question A, we have these two points right here. We're going to calculate the midpoint. We're going to do it both by um, using the graph and our calculations. So we take A and we put it at 2, comma 3. So we go over 2 and up 3. And right there is A. Remember, over 2, up 3, and there's A. Then we're going to put on B. B is over 4, up 1. I'm sorry, down 1. Let me undo that.
over four, one, two, three, four, down one, and there's B. And there's my segment AB. Now, what I have to do is, or what I can do, is draw a little rectangle in here. I notice in this direction, I have two spaces. The middle of those two spaces is um, one. And then in this direction right here, I count my spaces. I have four spaces. The middle of that is two. So right here is the midpoint of AB. To find out what that point is, I need to remember that I always am going to travel from the origin, so from right here in the middle, and to do that, I travel over 3 and up 1, and I calculate my midpoint to be 3, 1. If I want to use my formula, I'm going to take the x's, I'm going to take the 2 plus 4, that gives me 6, and remember I'm doing average, so I'm going to divide that by 2, and there's my 3. Then I can do the y's, that's where I'm going to use the 3 and the negative 1. Add those together, I get 2. Again, I'm going to take the average of that, and there's my 1, and there's my calculation, or my graph. What I would like you to do is pause this guy and uh, try uh, questions B and C, and then we can um, figure those out together if we need to. All right, for question B, I already have the point C and D put onto the graph. Um, you can use your x values, negative 2 plus negative 5, and divide that by 2. And the y values... 3 plus negative 2 and divide by 2, find your values. Or again, we can go up to our graph and we just make a triangle that connects the two points. We find the middle of each of those. I notice on the bottom here, it's three spaces and half of three is 1.5, so I go right up there. And on this side, five spaces, half of that is 2.5, which is right there. And I go right there, and notice they meet right there. That is the midpoint. But again, I have to find that point from the origin. So from there, I count over one, two, three and a half, and up a half. And it turns out that my midpoint is three and a half, negative three and a half, and, sorry, I forgot to put the rest on here, negative one, or positive one half. That is my midpoint formula. Then, when I want to do the last question, notice that they actually give me the midpoint, and I don't know the other end point. This one is a little bit trickier. So we're going to take our graph, we're going to first put on E, which is at negative 2, 0. Go backwards 2 and up 0. There's my E point. And then I'm going to put on my midpoint, which is 1, negative 2, over 1, down 2. This is the midpoint. And now where is the other end point, F? Well, I know it has to be somewhere down here. Because if I take this down, I know that I have to keep going in this direction somehow to get to the end point. The question is really, how far do I go? And what I'm going to do is use this idea of these triangles that we have here to help me get there. I know that to go from one end, or one, the end point to the middle, I went down two and over three. So to get to the end point, does it make sense that we would go down two more and over three more, and it would end up right there? This is point F. That point, again, measures from the middle, one, two, three, four spaces over, one, two, three, four spaces down. I think that that midpoint right there is 4, comma, negative 4. 
If I wanted to use my formula, I would take my x values, negative 2 plus x divided by 2, and I know that that has to equal 1. To solve that, multiply both sides by 2. I get negative 2 plus x equals 2. And then when I add 2 and add 2, there's my 4. When I do the y values, I have 0 plus x divided by 2 equals the midpoint. Again, multiply both sides by 2. And I don't have to add anything. x equals negative 4. Solving that problem. Uh, go ahead and give your worksheet a try, and we can talk more in class.